And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna and Merry Christmas. We are going to do some easy, quick side dishes for you to cook on your Christmas buffet or any time of the year. These are simple, easy to do recipes that you can make any time of the year. I just try to do things when I'm planning a Christmas menu. I have to think about oven space and stovetop space and all of that. So I try to think of all those things. So these are things, one is going to be done in the skillet. The other two are going to start out in the skillet, but they're going to end up in the oven. So you have space. We are going to get started with some potatoes. Now I have here five pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. Now I'm using Yukon Golds because I like them for mashed potatoes. But if you, you know, you use whatever kind of potato you like. I don't recommend the, the red ones for mashed potatoes. I love them roasted. And I'm just gonna drop them in some cold water. The reason is they're, um, the starch content is different. They don't fluff up like Idaho russet potatoes or the Yukon Golds do. But Yukon Golds, if you've never tried them, really make exceptional mashed potatoes. So that's what I'm using today. I've got five pounds that I've already peeled and I'm just gonna cut them into cubes. You can cut them into slices if you want. My mother always did this and that's, you know, we learn growing up certain ways of doing things and my mama always did this so I cut mine into cubes. At our Christmas dinner, we always had um, a dish with pickles and olives. I don't know why she always did that, but she, she did. We always had pickles and olives, and I love both. Sour pickles. And so we, um, or you know, kosher dill. So on my Christmas dinner menu, I always have a little dish of the green pimento stuffed olives and pickles. I'd like you to just shoot me an email and let me know or go on Facebook onto the Everyday Mana Facebook page and let me know what kind of traditions you had in your family. You know, the holidays are one of those things that are, they're just filled with tradition. Circumstances happen to where things change. You know, I've lost both of my parents and two brothers. And so, I, you know, our Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and all the holidays are not the same as they used to be. But it is still important that you establish tradition in your home. We have a, a funny little Easter thing that we do. It's just tr tradition now. Is we, um, my kids, you know, they're getting a little bigger now and they don't do it as much. But when they were little, we would, in the hiding of the plastic eggs, you know, the Easter egg hunts, put a pickle in one of them. It was just funny. And then whoever found the pickle they had to eat it. It was just a cute little thing. But we have, you know, certain traditions that we do. We always bake a cake on Christmas for Jesus, a birthday cake. We've done that since they were little. That has not stopped. We bake a birthday cake for Jesus. And every other year, you know, one, Austin will pick one year, and then Aaron picks the next what flavor cake that we're going to have. So we always bake a birthday cake along with our other you know, goodies that we have. I do like Christmas. I do enjoy the lights and the festivities. And the, of course, first and foremost is the meaning of Christmas, the birth of Jesus. I just love it. I love seeing it all. We got to go, uh, it's been a couple of weeks now, to see the play, A Christmas Carol, done by Charles Dickens' great, great grandson, Gerald Dickens. He does, he comes over from England and he does a one-man performance of his great-great-grandfather's A Christmas Carol. It's fabulous. 
absolutely fabulous. If you ever get the opportunity to go see that, go. The boys' school went, and so we went, Mike and I went with them to see it. It was wonderful, and it really kind of gets you in that Christmas mood when you see something like that. So I've got a big pot of potatoes here that I'm going to bring up to a boil. For those of you beginner cooks, make sure when you're cooking potatoes that you start them out in cold water and not boiling water. The reason is if you drop them into boiling water, the outside immediately starts exuding its starch. And then the outside, it gets like this fuzzy coating on it and it just doesn't taste good. And then if you start them in cold water, they all come up to the same temperature at the same time and it's just better. So always start your potatoes in cold water. And just like pasta, don't add your salt until that water comes up to a simmer. So I will let that just kind of do its thing. Now, I have a skillet here that I'm going to preheat. Now, normally, I do this recipe with the frozen pearl onions. However, my grocery store did not have any frozen pearl onions. So, I thought, what can I do? We're just gonna cook some onions. If you can find the frozen pearl onions, which normally I can find them. I don't know why they didn't have them last night when I went to the store, but they didn't. Use a bag of the frozen pearl onions, just thaw them. But if you don't have those, like I don't have those, use just a couple of onions. And I'm just gonna cut them in half like that and make little strips because I want a little bit of a bigger piece of onion. We are making, what we're making by the way, is a sweet pea and onion gratin. So we're gonna start it on the stove and then we're going to put it in the oven to finish baking and the, the topping that we're gonna put on there to get good and mm, crusty and yummy, golden. This is just two yellow cooking onions. Again, if you have the frozen pearl onions, use those, or you could use shallots if you wanted to use shallot and just slice the shallots, that would be fine. Whatever, I cut those too thick. Let me get those. Okay, now my butter has melted. Gonna add a little bit of canola oil or vegetable oil just to saute these onions. Gonna add them, I don't wanna brown them. All I wanna do is soften them. And while these are cooking, turn up my heat just a little bit, I will make the topping part of this dish. Just kinda let those go for a few minutes. Add just a little bit of salt just a little bit, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon or so of salt. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to make the topping for this gratin. And I just have two bags of frozen peas. Just two, let's see, these are 12 ounce bags, but you know, like how, it, you can half this recipe if you wanted to. But I love frozen peas, I think they're good. Now in this dish, I have just some panko breadcrumbs, just plain old panko breadcrumbs. And then in this, I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese, just really finely grated. And you can find it like this in the dairy section of your grocery store. And I'm gonna add some butter. I'm gonna add about probably two tablespoons or so of butter. And I'm gonna cut it into little pieces. And I'm gonna add that to the crumb topping. Because we're gonna sprinkle that over top. And this is what we'll need to get good and golden. And then just kind of stir all that together with your fingers is fine. And make sure that you spread that butter out when you top your dish. And I have a baking dish here. Let's wash our hands. I'm 
All right. Ooh, those onions are smelling good. I love the smell of onions. Christmas is just such an awesome day. I love Christmas. I remember so much when my boys were little. I still have them. Every year, Austin would find something. It, 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 it didn't matter what it was. He would find something that was his. And on Christmas Eve, we would either get a pretty decorative box or he would wrap it up and he would leave it on the, um, we had a little like love seat by our door and he would leave it there with a note and it was a birthday gift for Jesus. Oh my goodness. He did that all on his own and it was the sweetest thing. And I still have them. I kept them, of course. You know, I made sure, I've got a little piece of onion skin in there, that they disappeared before Christmas morning. So, because he would run first thing to look at, to see if that was gone. You know, and I think about little things like that, stories of my kids when they were little. And it, it had to make God's heart smile to know that a little child, little two-year-old, one-year-old, two, three, four, and five, I mean, little children, he did that for many years would do that on Christmas Eve. And it just about it makes me want to cry thinking about it because they're just so grown now. But it just, oh, it was just the sweetest thing. Now I'm going to add my two bags of frozen peas that are kind of thawed. I like frozen peas. I think they're good. And we are going to just warm those through for just a couple of minutes. They don't take very long. Just kind of warm those through. Bring that up to a boil. Now, if you were using the um, frozen pearl onions, you would want to start out, you know, thaw them, and then start out the very same way that I did. Put your butter and your olive oil or canola or whatever you're using in the bottom and just warm those through and then add your peas. And then what I'm going to do is in this baking dish, I'm going to put these in here using the same skillet. We're going to make a sauce to go in this. Just kind of let that wait on you for just a minute. We are gonna melt some more butter. I don't know, two, three tablespoons or so of butter. And while that's melting, I'm going to get my cornstarch out. We're going to make a little sauce, and I need to get my, there it is. Careful, don't let the butter burn. Just let it melt. We're going to add some half and half. You could add um, heavy cream. You could add evaporated milk. You could add whatever you wanted. Then I'm going to take a little bit of this half and half and put this in a separate little bowl. Then I'm going to add a couple of spoons of cornstarch. What that's going to do is thicken this up. We're making, in fancy terms, we're making a bechamel sauce, but what we're making is a white sauce to go in that gratin. Once that butter has melted, you just want to stir in the cornstarch to where it's smooth and no lumps. If you have a whisk, a whisk does a little better than, I don't have my whisk over here. Oh well, we'll use a little strainer just to be sure. Now, you see how that's come up to a simmer? That's what you want. Take it off the heat for a second. and then put your cornstarch mixture in there. 
put it back on the heat and that will come up to a nice thickness in about one minute. My potatoes I see are coming up to a boil. And then once that comes back up to a simmer, see how it will start thickening? See that cornstarch in there? I need a whisk. Here we go, let me get it out of here. Oh, I got too much stuff in here. Need my whisk. There we go. Yeah, take it off the heat there. You might need to add a little more of your half and half, which I do because it's a little thick. But that's okay. Basic gravy, if you will, which is what we're doing. Let's turn that off, whisk that together, clear off my workspace, put my casserole up here, pour this in there. Mm -mm -mm. Stir that together. Oh, it's so good. Just kind of get that incorporated. And then smooth it out. Add your topping 350 degrees for about 30 minutes until this is nice and golden brown and you will have the best peas that you have ever had. I'll be right back. I'm just going to clean this up. When I come back, we will finish up our potatoes and make our corn. Okay, now our potatoes are done and all I did was just drain them. And how you wanna test your potatoes is, does a fork go in that easily and meet no resistance? And if it does, then you know your potatoes are good. Today, I'm gonna to use the old fashioned potato masher. I don't normally use those, but I, I like the rustic texture of the potatoes. We're gonna add some sour cream, about a cup or so of sour cream and some butter because you absolutely have to have butter with mashed potatoes. I mean it is the holidays. No, it, you gotta, you just gotta. Then some salt. And some mash away for a moment. And we're going to add some half and half. And you can use this, or if you have your little mixer, you can use your mixer. This is a fun job for the kids. When I was little, this was my job at my mom's house. I always had to mash the potatoes. I used the little hand mixer because she didn't have one of these. But I always had to be the one to mash the potatoes. I'm gonna add a little bit of half and half to this. This, by using the little mixer, that little bit, that's probably about half a cup. Um, it makes them a little more rustic. Mmm, that half and half just makes them so creamy and good. Every so often, Take a spoon and go around the edges to make sure you get all those potatoes out of the corner. See, there's some that need to be incorporated. I think in my home, mashed potatoes is probably the most loved side dish. But they have to be whipped. They have to be smooth. My boys don't like texture in their mashed potatoes. I kind of do, but they don't. And that's good. I, I like to have a little bit of texture to them. Okay. Then what we're going to do 
is get a large baking dish and we're gonna put these wonderful mashed potatoes, if I can hold this big pot, into that dish. You know, they're pretty decadent as they are, but we are gonna add something else to them. Okay, let me get this in the sink. Smooth that out. Clean up your mess if you're like me. Smooth this out. And then we're going to add some grated white cheddar cheese. Now, I've grated this myself. I just bought a block of white cheddar because I want the white. I want it to stay white. If you want to use uh, Gruyere, you can. You could use Fontina. You could use cheddar. You could use any kind of cheese you like. Swiss cheese is great on top of potatoes. That's about probably, I don't know, three-fourths of a cup. Move my cutting board over here. I need my board. Get every bit of that cheese on there. This will go in the oven alongside the peas and onion gratin. And it needs about 15 minutes until the cheese is good and melted. That's browning up nicely. So we'll come back over here and we will start our final side dish, which is a skillet creamed corn. I love creamed corn. Let me get my board back over here. Now, I've got a large skillet here. And I'm going to preheat that. And I'm going to add two bags of frozen corn. This is the baby golden white corn, but you could use whatever you like, whatever kind of frozen corn that you like. Because, you know, with holidays, you're cooking for quite a few people here. So I'm doing two bags. If it's just a few, like maybe four or five, four people, then you would probably just need one bag. We're going to add some butter. That's perfectly okay to use that cheesy knife and we're just going to let that heat through and clean up my board here a little bit. Now we are going to use some roasted red peppers, just jarred roasted red peppers. Let me get a fork to help me get this out of here. I love roasted red peppers, and the jarred ones are very good. Make sure for this recipe that the jar that you get does not have herbs in it. Sometimes they come with garlic or herbs, and you don't want that. You just want just plain roasted red peppers. And I'm going to dice this up, and it looks so festive. on this dish. You can get them, uh, sometimes you can get them julienned, and that's good too. Just wanna cut them into little dices. If red peppers are on sale, you of course can make your own homemade roasted red peppers. I love roasted red peppers, and I put them in as many things as I can. as much or as little as you like. Now to my corn, I'm gonna add, this is evaporated milk, and you get it in the baking aisle of your um, grocery store where the flour and things like that are. That's about half a can, and I've got the other half in here. And what I did was mix it with a spoonful of cornstarch because we're gonna thicken this with this mixture. If you need a little more liquid, and I think I do, you can add either half and half or more evaporated milk or just milk is fine. You could use chicken stock if you wanted to. I'm just gonna let that corn come up to the heat and warm through. I'm gonna add my peppers to that. Stir that around. 
We're just gonna warm this through. All right, now our corn has come up to a simmer. Our gratin de peas are ready and our potatoes are ready. So let's finish up the corn. Once it comes up to a simmer, now I added just a little tiny bit of salt, maybe a half a teaspoon or so. And I'm gonna add some freshly ground pepper. Stir that in. I'll pull it off the heat for just a second. Now in here, remember, I've got the other half of that can of that evaporated milk with about a tablespoon or so of cornstarch. I found my whisk, so didn't have to use the little strainer because cornstarch dissolves really easy if you whisk it. Put it back on the heat, let it come up to a simmer, and that cornstarch will thicken that just a hair. And then we want to add, depending on well, where's my sugar? Mm. Depending on the sweetness of your corn. Uh, here's a thing of Splenda. We'll just add a little Splenda instead. I, can't, I don't know where my sugar went. I'm going to add a little thing of Splenda. About a tablespoon of corn or some Splenda, either one. I use Splenda most of the time anyway and then stir that together. Now, do you see how that has just thickened up? That's the creamed corn. Turn that heat off, that's done. This can be done in five or six minutes. It's really, really easy to do. And then there's your meal ready to serve. So remember I told you on my mother's table, we always had pickles and olives, so that's there. Now let's serve up our wonderful little gratin peas and onions. Oh, so good. I love this dish. Our cheesy baked sour creamed mashed potatoes. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. And then our delicious corn. Let me get a spoon. The, well, I'll use this one. Our wonderful creamed corn with our roasted red peppers in there. Serve this alongside your Christmas dinner with a green salad or you know anything that you have. Those are some easy, quick side dishes for you to serve alongside your Christmas dinner or just any time of the year. They're delicious. And don't forget my mama's olives and pickles. Thank you for joining with me. From all of us here to you, have a very Merry Christmas and remember to celebrate the real reason. Thank you for joining with me. Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.